Upland has the in-house token Upix, and to a degree, we obviously have to use it. That said, aside from the absolute necessities in Upland, is it possible to play the game with a predominant focus on USD? Can we still function in-game, aside from, like, again, the regular stuff with sends and minting and things that have to be done in Upix? Those aside, can we play the game in USD? Hey there, John Henry here, SSFTG. Welcome to the video. If this is your first time on the channel, welcome, my friend. I hope to earn your like and subscription today. There are a few things that have to be done with Upix, and there isn't a way around that, right? I mean, minting properties, you can only do that in Upix. That said, you know, is there anything stopping us from playing Upland with an almost exclusive focus on USD? What would it look like? How would that work? Let's, let's do some theory crafting in Upland with some USD and see what's going on here. Of course, there are a few things that we have to take in mind. You have to be Uplander status before you can even use USD. So that is something to consider in and of itself. When you buy a property, it doesn't matter if you buy it in, in Upix or USD, you have to hold it for X amount of days before it can be sold again as USD. USD prices, generally speaking, across the game are around... 0 to 30% below UPEX values. More often than not, it's like 10 to 30% below the UPEX value. And that's simply just because UPEX is easier to get. We have in-game earnings from our properties that we own. We do treasure hunting. We have all these ways to earn UPEX. So USD things are generally cheaper or UPEX things are more expensive, whichever way you want to look at it. USD does have some extra fees associated with it as well. When we want to withdraw our USD, there's an extra 5% fee utilizing Tilia to withdraw to PayPal. It's just part of the business. There is also the psychological thing. Real world value, which we understand and know with USD, we know what $100 will buy. Well, with real world value association comes real world emotions. When you're putting real world dollars into the game, USD that you understand and can, you know, have a, an understanding of what that that hundred dollars or whatever can do, you're going to have a little bit more of a psychological barrier with those. So emotions can start coming into play. You got to be careful. In order to play predominantly with USD, we have to first figure out the groundwork of what it's all going to look like. Let's say you want to spend no more than a normal game these days. Although with micro traction, with micro transactions in games, I mean it's hard to say what normal is these days. Let's say a hundred bucks to keep it realistic, assuming that you probably bought the game for like sixty bucks. And if you're anything like me, you probably bought a couple skins or some stuff in game too with those micro transactions, and yeah, they get me every time. Um, but let's keep things fair, around a hundred bucks, and that'll be our kind of base guideline that we're going to be working with. And, you know, right now, if we were to hunt for properties that are on the cheap, we're going to find a lot of them right here as an example in Los Angeles that are $6.89. Basically $7 and you can buy your first Upland property NFT, right? I mean, that's pretty cool. But, but here's the thing, right? If you look right here, the markup. Now, the markup is going to become a big factor when we're talking USD, and we'll talk more about it a little bit later, but we do want to consider the markup. We want to hunt for good deals that are not only a good price, just because it's $6.89 right now, it doesn't mean that these floor prices might not be $8 a week from now. That can definitely be the case, but we want to try to get all of the chips on our side. We want the most probability in our favor to allow us a kind of an easier ride, if you will. Now, because we can't mint if we're not using Upix, or if we're using Upix, we're not going to have very much of it, this would be the way to buy very cheap properties, because very frequently people are in new areas buying properties or minting properties in Upix, holding them for a couple days, and then selling them in USD to cash out. It's one of the most frequent ways that people utilize to cash out profits after new city releases. But where this is really going to shine is when you focus on sold out areas or nearly sold out areas. And when you target sold out areas or nearly sold out areas that are in collections, that's where you're going to gather some serious ROI in a shorter span of time. The properties we buy now have to be held for 30 to 30 days depending on your account level anyway, so we might as well try to buy them as cheap as we can and use that holding period as a way to give the property some time to appreciate in value. 
A key thing to note here when we're using USD as a base is the floor price isn't necessarily the best price for us. Remember, USD buyers should be getting things on a discount. USD is usually more valuable than UPEX because UPEX is easier to get. We've already talked about that. So I'm not going to be buying something in USD at 115% markup if I can find a very, very similar thing at a 93% markup. What does 93% mean? Well, that means that they minted it at 7,540 and they're selling it at $6.99. They're taking a slight loss on the profit to cash out in USD. Like we just talked about, one of the most common ways that people cash out after a city release is to buy really cheap mintable properties and then flip them in USD. The reason this is so important is because of their earnings. If we were to look at the earnings of this property here at a 93% markup, if we were to look at the earnings here, it's 91.2 UPEX per month. Now, 91.2 UPEX per month on something that costs us $6.99. If we do the math on that really quick, that's going to give us 6.99 at 0.091, right? That 0.91 divided by the $6.99. This is per month earnings. That's 0.013 per month, right? So if we average all of this out, that's giving us a total of about 15.6% earnings when the base earning is 14.7. So we're getting a nice little almost 10% boost in our earnings because we're buying it under mint. Another consideration here when we're focusing on collection areas is the markup. Again, the sale price isn't necessarily the best price. Looking at the markup price, sometimes we'll be able to find things on a severe discount because people are trying to sell out in USD. They're trying to, again, cash out their profits after a new city release. Here's a really good example of one that, although it may not necessarily be in a collection, it's at a 76% markup. But the one underneath it, this is part of a newbie collection, part of the Los Angeles collection. These aren't in any type of collections. But just the floor being 76%, not even in a collection, doesn't really matter when you're getting it at that kind of discount. You're effectively getting the earnings from a $325 property for the cost of a $249 property. That's nuts. That's the kind of stuff that we're looking for. The larger the property, the more it's going to earn. And the larger the property within a collection, the larger the bonus multiplier helps us out in those earnings. Collections are the ones, you know, really the only time that I don't mind overspending because those are the boosts that really kind of keep things going. Those are the ones that run the ship, you know? So spending a little bit more on those collection properties because of what they are and what they do in the game that's the same approach that a lot of other people are going to have too. They're going to be looking for size, UP squared, markup, right? We want the best bang for our buck here because of the earnings. Not only that, but the ones that are in collections are going to hold their value for longer anyway. Yes, they may be more expensive. As an example, this one here, if you were to buy it for 250 bucks and the mint price is 325,000, you could turn it around and sell it at mint price and make a 25%. I mean, even after the fees, you'd still make like 15% uh, just on the purchase alone going into UPEX. But if you wanted to stay within USD, buying and holding it at 249 while earning the profit or the earnings of a $325 property and then listing it for sale later on at at no markup, right? Just say is 100%, which would be at mint price, $325. Not only are you earning the increased difference between what you bought it at and what the mint price is, but you're also creating a scenario where you're buying it and you're able to sell it at, a, you know, 100% markup after everything is sold, uh, sold out and people are looking for deals and yours is the first one that shows up because it's not in a markup. What kind of crazy person wouldn't sell it at a markup? Well, the one who bought it at 25% off and earned for the last two months. So I know the, the focus of this is not to use UPEX, but the cool byproduct of holding these properties that we bought in USD is that they're still going to earn their interest, their APY, in UPEX. This is in-game cash flow, and this is going to help us with our everyday stuff. If we want to do some treasure hunting, or if we want to navigate around because there's a new city launch, we'll have the UPEX to do that because our properties will be feeding the UPEX machine for us. Let the properties do their work like the game intended. 
Although we may not be able to exclusively use USD in Upland, it is definitely possible to do like 90% or more of it. This is awesome because it allows new users who don't want to deal with other tokens or currencies like Upix or, or Bitcoin or some of these other cryptocurrencies, but they still want to get involved. This is a way that they can participate without having to really have too much of their feet dipped into the cryptocurrency world. It's kind of a no-lose situation. Now, if you aren't in Upland yet, make sure to click the link in the description. It gets you in the game with some starting Upix, and if you decide to invest some cash in the game too, you also get a whopping 50% bonus on your first Upix purchase with a cap of 50,000 Upix. If your main focus is USD, that may easily be all of the Upix you really need anyways, but as an awesome perk just for my SSFTG crew that used my referral link and bought some Upix with their 50% bonus, you all have access to the SSFTG USP list of properties, so make sure to look around and get your first property at up to 20% or more below our purchase price. If you have any thoughts, questions, ideas for new videos, or even a hilarious street view, drop them in the comments. I always love hearing from you all. Thanks for watching, and until the next one, have a great time in the metaverse.